We went and saw New Mutants in the theater. Okay, it was a drive-in, but still. Hey, this is Tom with Tom Tech Show, and I do have down here the uh, spoiler zone because I'm just going to talk about the movie because um, really nobody should be going and seeing it. Um, if you're going to this movie and thinking, oh, it's an X-Men, it's a Mutants, it's an X-Men, you know, it could be, you know, Maybe Deadpool will show up or something like that. It's like, no, that's not what's happening. That's not what this movie is. This is more of a uh, kind of pseudo thriller something remake of another movie. And we'll talk about that. So um, the premise, I guess, of the New Mutants is that they find people who are you know, exhibiting in the X-Men world, exhibiting mutant uh, abilities, mutant powers, and in order to protect them, supposedly they are moved to this secret, uh, hidden, secure location so they can find out how to uh, handle their powers uh, so they don't hurt anybody else or kill anybody else or anything like that. So, and, and the premise that all these mutants are told is that this is to... You know, eventually you're just going to move up and join, you know, the other guy, the one guy, the wheelchair guy. You know, they're not actually going to say it for some reason. So that turns out to be a lie. It's gonna, it's more along the Deadpool line of thinking where they're actually going to create them into super soldiers and, you know, sell them off kind of thing. So it's it goes along that line of where send, they're sending the mutants rather than the, you know, Xavier, Dr. X kind of sending the mutants, which is fine. I mean, okay. You're doing that. You're not telling me. But, I mean, the movie starts with uh, this one girl, Danielle, who she's trying to get... Her dad comes and tries to get her away from something, and houses are burning down and everything else. And and she gets knocked out, and then she gets sent off to uh, the this little building. I don't know if you see some of the images of this building where all the mutants are being held. It's this building... So that uh, they keep all the new mutants in, um, and there's a, a force field kind of thing that keeps them all there. And we very quickly find out that it's the force field is being generated by, you know, the doctor that's in there. Uh, so that's her mutant power is generating these force fields. And once Danny arrives, everybody starts having these weird experiences about their worst fears whatever things coming after them maybe things they experienced when they were young which supposedly i guess gives a backstory to what's going on with the other characters but they're that's really not described very well no but nobody's backstory is really very described very well so quickly on in the movie they continue to think oh um What's going on? What's Danny's power? What is she here for? Where everybody in the whole audience knows already she's the one causing them to have these little, you know, visions or whatever that are actually physical manifestations and they can actually attack them. Um, and I'm like, okay, so these are four people in this building who have... No, there's five of them, right? There's five of these new mutants that are in this building that have these weird powers that are doing... You know, whatever being, you know, all pouty and hurdy and, and you know, basically doing high school wars, you know, kind of who's popular, who's not inside the whole, inside the building. And it just got me thinking, okay, it's a bunch of people who have some weird powers who are being, you know, controlled, mentored, something by a, a female doctor. And there's very limited sets, limited uh characters everything else am i watching so am i watching the new mutants or am i watching glass uh, the similarities and you know even so even down to one of the actors anya taylor joy is in who's in glass is also in the new mutants so i'm like okay now we're reusing we're bringing over actors um the the doctor here, played by who played the doctor? Oh, where's the doctor? Where's the doctor? Is she even a doctor? Dr. Reyes, Alice Braga. So there's a doctor, a female doctor in here in glass. There's also Sarah Paulson plays a female doctor. So, I mean, the parallels just 
continue on and on and on and on. And apparently this doctor is the one who generates all the force fields because when they get into a fight, she can snap force fields around them. And when she comes and um, they're trying to, you know, figure out what she's doing, they find her in her little video room, which there's also, so there's a video room in glass where they're watching them. And there's a video room in this where she's watching them. So again, another parallel. Um, so they come and they confront the doctor because she's in her little video room. She's able to put them all into a, you know, force field and kind of squish them down a little bit. But then the character, the creature that Danielle can emit to try and, I don't know, help her or do, do stuff is this bear. Because there's, you know, the, the Indian story that they go over where... <clears throat> You have two bears inside you, basically a good bear and a bad bear, and the one that wins is the one you feed, you know. And, yeah, I just explained that in, like, three seconds, and they can drag it out into, like, seeming like a half-hour story. <sighs> yeah. Um, so the bear attacks the doctor and kills the doctor, but it's like, okay, so the doctor can generate force fields to protect herself and keep all these people in, but when it comes to this one little plot point that the doctor needs to die, she suddenly can't generate a force field to protect herself. I'm like, okay, well, this is all breaking down. And then, of course, we have to have the uh, lesbian relationship between the Rain Sinclair and Danielle. We have no... I mean, the Rain Sinclair is stereotypical, kind of short-haired, you know dark eye makeup kind of a, a character so it's that's gets kind of obvious from there uh, then just suddenly Danielle decides oh we're gonna have a relationship and that gets you know it just gets it gets a little monotonous you know for the reasons why things are going on and and the big problem is the movie meanders nobody's powers really are a, Set. I mean, nobody's powers are really. I mean, I guess that's the point of the new mutants. You're not. You're trying to find out what your powers are, but they're not really what you would think they are. And then this Anna Taylor Joy, who plays this Ileana Rasputin, um, for some reason I don't know if it was her, if it was the director, or anything. It's like okay, so you're this Russian person. You have a billion different powers she can transform her body she can jump through space to different places and do you know all kinds of crazy things and then we're gonna make you when you're not using your powers or whatever you're just sitting there you're gonna have a little hand puppet and i'm like okay who thought of that because that just got dumb from the beginning um uh, it you know just uh, I, I, you can see, I mean, the, so the, uh, Rotten Tomatoes score for this is 32 and audience score is a 53. I, I don't think I would go 53. I'd give it a, you know, uh, a 25 here on IMDb. It's uh 57. Now the director, Josh Boone, um, he's directed other things like, uh, that came the fault in our stars, which actually, was very good on Rotten Tomatoes, um, audience and critic scores, both. Um, so I, I don't know that he, maybe he can only direct this kind of movie and he can't direct something more uh, dark and, you know, almost horror side of ish, you know, kind of thing. Um, I don't know if maybe that's not his, you know, maybe The Fault in Our Stars is more of his, you know, genre where he can, he can direct well. Um, the special effects were okay. I mean, it just it just didn't. I kept the whole first three quarters of the movie were just it was dark and in a drive-in movie kind of setting. Sometimes the screen is a little bit darker than normal, so it made it even darker. So I don't know if you know maybe uh, the movie makers are going to have to do that where they think like, okay, this is going to a drive-in. Maybe we need to crank the brightness up a little bit on the movie before we ship the printout that might help quite a bit so um but the first like three quarters of the movie are just this droning on and on between you know the characters and and you know trying to build this relationship 
between the Rain character and the Danielle character, which was done over the top. And then we had kind of a psycho kind of shower scene where she's screaming and stuff, which kind of reminded me of a psycho, you know, thing in the shower. And, you know, I wanted it to be, you know, more... I guess I was going in more expecting an X-Men type movie. Um, but there was really no villain at all. I mean, the doctor was kind of a villain, but she was just an agent of the Essex Corporation trying to create these uh, mutant super soldiers. Okay, well, that's been, you know, done before. And we know what that is from, you know, from Deadpool. But there was no outside source. There was no outside anything. And then the odd thing, once Danielle... So in the end, when the bear is going around chewing everybody up and trying to kill everybody because Danielle is asleep because all of these manifestations happen when Danielle's asleep. Then they wake Danielle up, but the bear's still there. I'm like, okay, I thought this stuff kind of went away when she wakes up. So if you want to see a movie that you figure out in the first 10 minutes and it takes the characters another hour to figure out, which tends to make the movie drone on and has a bunch of odd plot points and you don't want to see an X-Men movie or a Deadpool movie or any kind of superhero movie, then go see this film. Otherwise, save your time. Go see something better. Um, go see Bill and Ted, something like that. That would definitely be better. We saw that this weekend as well. It's pretty good. Um, so there you go. Thanks for watching this. And as always, like, share, and subscribe. Uh, thanks, everybody, my new subscribers that have come on. Um, I continue to make content for everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care. Yeah.